this is what, October 23rd, I think? 20. 24. 24. October 24, 2017. I'm John Clark, and I'm sitting here at Lindy's Restaurant at Beck and Mohawk with Sue Duty. And Sue, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a long time, and we should have had, should have interviewed you many years ago. But you've got um, that many more stories to tell now. <laughs> Thanks. No, no, I was interviewed for that video they did on WSU. Oh, that's right. They came and, and interviewed me for that. But it wasn't so much the early time as what's happened right now, mm -hmm. you know. So, and how business is, and, and uh, you know, it's been an interesting experience. I was never in the restaurant business, and two sons, you know, are, mm -hmm. started Bravo and Brio, and then Chris has now started Piata, and Rick has two restaurants up in Cleveland. So, um, we're a real restaurant family, <laughs> except my daughter is uh, president and owner of Pet People which is uh -huh. pet supply stores, right. and they have 47 of those around the country. I didn't know that. And so I have some bunch of entrepreneurs in my family. Now, do any of them live in German Village? No, no, mm -hmm. uh-uh. They live, uh, most all of them live in Arlington. Their kids are in private school, or in, um, and then I have my oldest son in Cleveland. Uh, his daughter just graduated from NYU in New York, mm -hmm. and his other daughter's at Cornell. So, mm -hmm. so I've got seven grandchildren, and, the, and just delight in them whenever I can be with them. So, do you mind telling me when you were born? No, 1934. 1934. Uh, I'm 83. 83. And where were you born? What? Tell me a little bit about oh. your early life. Oh, okay. Up. I was born in Dayton, Ohio, and my father was in the insurance business, and I went to uh, Oakwood High School, which is a part of Dayton. Oakwood is. And in 19, um, then I was, um, went to Ohio Wesleyan to university and graduated in 1956 and was married to my husband who was also a student at Ohio Wesleyan. And we were going to live in Dayton and I had a job there and he had a job. And all of a sudden he decided he wanted to go to Ohio State and get his doctorate. He had graduated from Ohio Wesleyan. Mm -hmm. and get his master's and his doctorate and be a professor. So mm -hmm. we moved to Columbus. I substitute taught in the Columbus Public Schools. So then we came to Columbus and um, I immediately knew that the restaurants were very good <laughs> because we had traveled a lot with, uh, when uh, we were young and we had gone to Europe and gone around Europe a, a lot. And, uh, we always were interested in food. This mm -hmm. was when I was still married and had four kids. And all, all of us were really interested in food. So we did, you know, when I came to Columbus, I thought, what happened to this city that it's all meat and potatoes and there isn't a decent restaurant around? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that was, then I was divorced and I, um, uh, had gourmet cooking lessons in my house because Everybody I knew thought I was such a superb cook that they wanted to learn what the techniques were. And so, um, so I was a great devoted to Julia Child. Mm -hmm. And Julia, you know, had mastered in the art of French cooking. So I was cooking through that book and then sharing the things with my friends at my house. So that's the way I, and I did some catering. And this was after I was divorced. And then um, it was my former husband what, that said he had an office down here, the duty company, and he suggested we buy this place when it went up for sale. And it was interesting. That was 1981, and actually we opened in yeah, in 81, and so it was winter of 81. And um, I came down, and the person who owned it was. Um, he, he was the city, some like on the city council, mm -hmm. and he um, kept telling me, well, we can't, we can't show you the kitchen yet, because it was so disastrous, oh. I think. <laughs> but finally, his family did the restaurant, and like his aunt did a salad bar, which was in the front room. And she said, well, can I come back and work for you and do the salad bar? And I said, oh, I'm afraid the salad bar is going to be the first to go. 
So when you bought so, it, it was a restaurant already. Yeah. Oh, was yeah. It was a restaurant. It was a restaurant in the. It was a grocery store in the very beginning of its time before mm -hmm. before the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a grocery store, and then um, it was um, the their name were her the Kerr, Kerr K E R R, mm -hmm. and they bought it from the people who owned it as a restaurant, and they t I mean for as a grocery store and they turned I believe they're the ones who turned it into a restaurant mm -hmm. and um, they um, were she this ended the 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 third dining room was not part of it I added that on mm -hmm. later and she had a shop in the middle dining room which um, and where we're sitting and it had um, needlepoint and she would design these needlepoints, and all the women in Bexley and Columbus would come and buy these needlepoints oh. here. Is that where we're sitting now? Yeah, where we're sitting now. This is a connector of sorts that you. Well, no, this was here. This, this was, was a house. this was okay. another house that was here, and so they opened it up mm -hmm. to to be open for the dining room, the main dining room, and so then um, she. Uh, bought the building, they had, they had quite a bit of money, and they bought the building across the street, and she had her full shop in there, okay. and then they turned this into restauranting. And I was here a few times, it was called the... Um, was that when it was the Lindenhof? Lindenhof, right. Lindenhof. Was Bill Shore involved in that? Yeah, he owned too? the building. Bill Shore was, okay. Yeah, I bought it from Bill. And uh, I bought the building from Bill. He was a neighbor of mine in Arlington, actually. Mm. And he, um, and so then uh, they changed it. It sold four times. It was the, the what did we say? The, uh, Linden Hall. Linden Hall. And then Albert P. Grubbs. Right, when it was Barry Zach's place, I believe. Well, it was Barney, Barn. Barney, what was his last name? Greenfield or something? Barney. Uh, yeah, he that, owned that it. And then it was the Palmer House. And that was Palmer McNeil, who was a city auditor or something. And his family ran it. And that's who I bought it from. Okay. And so that was 1981. So it's been Lindy's since 19, you know, since then. Mm -hmm. Because I changed. They, people have thought that it was Lindy's all along because Lindenhoff, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, then they, but they called, the other two called it Barney's and Albert P. Grubbs. And one of our notable attorneys in, in the city was, um, he said he used to ride his motorcycle here. And so I thought, well, the people would be glad not to have motorcycles coming up and parking there because they were always conscious of the noise. Right, yeah. right, right. But the people were, were nice, but you know, for some reason then, the German Village Society was not as big on businesses as they were on, um, you know, retail. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have tourists down here. And, uh, you know, there were, there were some people who came and spoke to them and said, you know, it's good, like, you know, the, in uh, D.C., the area that's historic, you know, it's got too much retail, retail, and so the people are are moving out of there because it's, it's pushing them out. You know, mm -hmm. it's no, it's kind of like the short north, no parking, and you know, but a lot of living area. But I think what the city has to do is put more parking in the buildings that they're building for residential. Mm -hmm. You know, if they went downtown to explode. So, um, but it was it was interesting because in the beginning it wasn't a great you know it was all my own recipes and I was cooking in the back part time. I would, Were your children old enough to be helping with you? Oh yeah, time? they not <clears throat> cooking, but Chris was still in New Orleans and he worked for the for the family that's in the restaurant business down there and learned a lot. And he was finishing at Tulane University. So he came back, and at that time it was kind of interesting, John, because I had hired a chef out of Dallas, and he came up here, and his wife was going to come, and I was looking for a job for her because she did catering at Nina Marcus, or did, did something to do with the restaurant at Nina Marcus in Dallas, and she was looking for a place, so I was talking to everybody I knew in retail to see if they could find a place for her. 
and all of a sudden he he was a tennis player as well as a chef and he uh, played tennis with Chris and Chris says he thinks that's why I left because he beat him oh. <laughs> but he he um, he was an interesting guy, and and he wouldn't he wouldn't answer my calls. You know, when I said, "Where have you gone?" and he when when we went over, he was staying in. I own those two buildings back there and their apartments, and so he was staying in one of those apartments. And I said, "Go see where the chef is and see why he isn't here," because it was getting to be dinner time. And Chris went over and said, "I think he's gone back to Texas because everything's gone and his tennis racket's gone." Really. And so that then the he wouldn't, year. yeah, he wouldn't, he didn't tell me he wasn't happy, but we had ordered China and changed the menu for him, and mm -hmm. you know, it was sort of bad because um, I really wanted to have him, you know, we had advertised that this great, he had worked with um, Wolfgang Puck, huh. and so he had a good credentials, you know. So anyway, but um, so he left, and then. Uh, Chris took over in the kitchen because he was finished at Tulane, and so he ran the kitchen for a while until I hired Tom Johnson, who was a noted chef in Columbus, and that brought a lot of people in because they had taken cooking classes from Tom, and he he did a good job for probably, I think it was a year and a half, two years, mm -hmm. and then uh, my friend Nancy Rigsby in Arlington said, I have a son coming from California, Kent Rigsby, that's in the restaurant business, and do you think you'd give him a job? And I said, well, have him call me and come in. He was young. I mean, he had graduated from Ohio Westland long after I did. And uh, he, so you knew Rigsby's. Mm -hmm. and I didn't realize there was, was a connection. He was here four years. Yeah, he was here four years and made enough money and enough, you know, he thought he was gonna, he was kind of, he's kind of arrogant, and he had made enough money and felt like the people of Columbus would back him with money to get his own place. And um, so he got a lot of partners and then he got the place down in, in uh, you know, in the in short, north. in short north, and it was fine. But I, you know, I went to see that, and I thought, oh wow, that's worse. As far as it was in bad shape, then, because that was 1987, mm -hmm. before they'd really start anything down there, mm -hmm. before Cameron. And so, uh, so it's been interesting. Was was your place here in 1981 a success immediately? No, no, I'd say it was a good. Ten months before we really got to where we were, and I think it was mainly when Tom Johnson came because that kind of people found out that the chef that I had hired from Texas didn't stay, and so I think when Tom Johnson came, they knew that the women of the city that don't work, which was a lot then, more so than now, but uh, they, I think they had all taken classes from him, and so they knew that he knew how to cook, and so they wanted to come and see what his food was all about. Mm -hmm. So, and then people liked the ambience. You know, the ambience was comfortable, and there weren't any other places like that. And so I had regular guests that would come. Every week they'd have their own table. People know the numbers of these tables. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, this is Larry James's table, the attorney. And, you know, he knows, they know when they take the reservation what his table is. And Yvette McGee Brown, she's at table 32 in the front room every other day. And they know, so they don't book it for somebody else. I've had people, it's amazing, because I've had people walk out that their table, somebody was sitting at their table. Really? Yeah. And they were upset. <laughs> Did you start that from the beginning? Were people that comfortable in the beginning and that, that's continued to this day where they say, this is my place and I yeah. want to sit here and, right. and I love it and I'm not going anywhere else? Yeah. Jana Jackson has table 20 and, you know, if somebody's there, she does, who else comes there? Oh, Frank Cipri Cipriano. And so if Frank, it depends on which one's earlier to get the table and then we always give the other one the table next to it. Mm -hmm. so. if, if someone divorces, is there a fight over the table? 
I don't, I never, don't think I've run into that. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think that I've had any the, with really regular guests that have been divorced and there's been a fight over it. I know they fight about pets and fight about everything else, so I'm sure there probably has been <laughs> some kind of confrontation. I know that people have, some of the Bexley people have kind of given me a joke as far as they come in and say, well, uh, we're having an affair, you know, and they're with some other than their partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I say, well, this is the last place you'd come if you were having an affair. Because <laughs> everybody knows these two people who were, obviously their spouses were out of town and they were having dinner together. So I said, you wouldn't come here if you were having an affair. <laughs> Unless it was to be a secret right out in the open. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. So it's been interesting, you know, the funny things were the, the, the city, when I started to say that about, you know, the retail, they wanted more retail. There was a place called the um, Old World Bazaar. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear about I, it? I know of it, where yeah. there are the, the lawyer's offices, five, right. 555 City Park, and the right. old trolley barn. And it went right through, mm -hmm. all the way through. And it was great. It was a great place for people to come and, and you know, like City Center was originally when it was downtown. You know, people would come and they'd walk around the village. And so um, I started the business, the German Village Business Group, and oh. we met here, and it was trying to get connected with the with the society, so mm -hmm. that they wouldn't be anti-business. You mm -hmm. know, I mean anti-retail. So, uh, so they were very, very nice. I started that, and the, we started donations. The, I don't know if that still exists or not. The, German Village Business League? Uh, it's called the German Village Business Community now. Oh, okay. And it's a committee of the society. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's probably better, because this was a big, getting to be a pretty big group mm -hmm. when it was the business. But I started that because I wanted them to know that really the retail was what was bringing the people down here, and it wasn't just the residents. But um, I, I think, you know, they agreed with that then. Mm -hmm. So, but they, you know, they, the city was always, not so much now, but the city was kind of in, in disagreement with the people of German Village because they didn't want to spend the money that they knew this was going to take. Mm -hmm. German Village used to go all the way over to Main Street. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, when I bought it, it was cut off by 70 going through. Right. 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 Um. I forgot what I was going to ask, but this obviously grew over time. Right. You had, you have what, three buildings down here that constitute your dining rooms? No, um, no, the two are apartments back, two the two back buildings there. in the back. And then you have and these two. And then I have the, the uh, we have, uh, I added the, the west room on, but we had the two front, the front room and this room, mm -hmm. and then this was a plate glass here because one time, uh, a young woman was coming through the alley across the street and she thought that this alley continued and oh. drove in and almost went through the plate glass window that was right here at this table. Oh, drove through and, uh, Yeah, almost drove through it. There was a fountain out there because there was a patio out there, an awning area mm -hmm. that we didn't use. But like Palmer had used it, I think, for picnics or... I did have one wedding out there, yeah, one wedding was out there, and then, but this plate glass window and this woman, uh, do you, did you know Mark Harding, the columnist for the Dispatch? Yes, yes I did. Oh, he's a great mm -hmm. guy. He, he called me and said he wanted to, a job, and I said, what are you talking about, Mike? And he said, I want to come work for you because I want to do a story on it, and so he came and worked for I think two weeks, and he bussed. He was a busser. And, and uh, he was here the night this woman almost came through the plate glass window. And, and I said, you better go call her mother. And she had, she was 
really bad, really inebriated. Anyway, she had a picture of Pina Colada sitting on the seat next to her. <laughs> and the police came and they arrested her. And so Mike went and called her mother. And her mother was so excited to talk to Mike Harden, she couldn't even believe that she didn't even seem to care about the daughter being taken off to jail. And she was like, you're doing a, what now? <laughs> so he was already pretty well known as the columnist for the Oh, yeah. Columnist. Oh, he had written books, and he was a good friend of mine, and I just loved Mike. He, he was, was a, a great person. writer. He was, I loved his writing. Oh, yeah. And so, um, so he stayed here, and then he did this thing, John, on... Uh, it was on the front of the metro section of the Columbus Dispatch, and it said, Lindy's, simply the place to be. And then it had a picture of a couple of my bar hangers-ons in the big picture all across the front of this. And then a huge article with a picture of Kent, the chef, and it was when Kent was here. And, uh, and uh, you know, it was really a big splash. It hung in the bathroom for a long time. The, they probably have a copy of it over there at the society. And, was, and this is still sort of known as the place to be, isn't it? Oh, I think we have a lot of competition. You know, Cameron's a great restaurateur. He's a good friend of my son, Chris. And he's, a, you know, I don't know how he does it with all his different concepts. But mm -hmm. people have wanted me to help him do other restaurants like the Edwards when they did the buried, the um, brewery district. They wanted us to come down and help them. But I, I just never wanted to. We, my former husband was then in Cleveland um, between wives. He ended up having four more wives after me. <laughs> and uh, he was in Cleveland, and he had, and Rick was in Cleveland, our oldest son. And he, they decided that he was doing a concept called investment clothiers. And it was a men's clothing kind of kind of like Joseph Banks is mm -hmm. now. They would make him special. He had investment clothiers. It was where the travel agency is back here. Mm -hmm. And then he had three other, four other stores, I guess. And then he put a store up in Beechwood, which is east side Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And he put a store in there. And then they decided that they wanted to do a Lindy's up there. Well, that fell pretty flat on its face because it was, it was, um, they, they're different up there, you know. They're very frugal. I mean, we'd have all these lovely women come in that would split a iced tea, and mm -hmm. split a salad, and it, we couldn't make any money. So anyway, and Les wanted that for, li for something for, for limited, and so he's done much better with the space than we did because it was high rent. It was a mall, you know, it was a mall building. But it was the same concept as here, yeah, with the same menu. Yeah, and all. it looked a lot like it, and we had the same menu, and mm -hmm. the sous chef from here went up and was chef there, and that was open from 86, I think, to 88, mm -hmm. and uh, then it closed. And, you know, I didn't like running another place because I was going back and forth because I was doing a lot of the financial stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so finally it closed, and, and it was helpful to me because it just didn't take off like this place did. Now, more recently, and it was on the second floor too, oh. which was not a good location in the Beechwood Mall, yeah. you know. I mean, people had to go upstairs to get to it, so you either took the stairs or the elevator, and the elevator wasn't right there at the entrance. And it was not a good move. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, more recently you've had a Lindy's at either Polaris or Easton? Did we had one while? at Polaris. For a while. Uh, Herb Glimpshire was developing Polaris, and he's a regular here. He was here for lunch today when I walked in. And Herb wanted a Lindy's there because he was very good, you know, about being here a lot. And so uh, he did that. But then when my boys sold the Bravo and uh, Brio rights to an investment firm, they didn't want to have another they didn't want to have another concept uh -huh. in there because they already had Bon V, which was a third concept. And so they, um, indeed, um, he, he made it look like Lindy's, and it had the same menu and stuff, and we had a good chef. But then they had, if they wanted to have this investor help them, they had to sell, they had to change that to a Brio. So now it's a Brio. Mm. Yeah. Well, how do you 
you know, not many restaurants are successful for how many ever years you've been here? 36? Is it 36 yeah, years? Yeah, 36. How, how does that happen? I think we have a consistency, and I have managed to hire good chefs, and I'm here a lot to see things. I, I do things from the travels that I've done, like when I went to the Far East, I came back and I, I said to my help, I said, I don't want you pointing the way, or, you know, they, they take everyone to what part of the restaurant they want to go to, if they want to go to the restroom, or, you know, they want to use a phone or something, you know, then the, the waiters are told that you take the person there. And, um, you know, because it used to be and they that they point to the stairway here to mm -hmm. tell them to go in the bathroom. And, I, and, and, you, and you know, they are so polite in Japan and in the Orient because they bow and somebody's always there at an elevator to help you up. And it's mm -hmm. a lot different than here in this So country. it's part of the, the, of the whole brand you've yeah, built here. Yeah, right. And then I am... I know a lot of people in town because I've done a lot of nonprofit stuff. And when this was successful, I would not be here all the time. I mean, I was here almost every day for a little bit, but I wouldn't stay and be here at the meal times all the time because I was working at the foundation, Columbus Foundation, or Action for Children, or you know, I was on a lot of, lot of boards. I've been on the workforce development board for 30 years, and um, you know. I, I just wanted to do those things, and I think by my participation in those things, and people see my face and they think, oh, I haven't been at Lindy's a while, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that helped. I did a lot of just sort of um, networking with people. You know, I had organizations uh, that I joined and would go to their mixers and stuff, and, you know, I think it just, you know, they knew I was out in the city, that I wasn't here all the time, but they knew that I watched this place, particularly the regulars. They knew I'd watch this place. I mean, because in the last six months with this cancer, they've really said that, you know, they missed me and mm -hmm. everything. And the ha staff, I think, respond better when I'm here. I think they're more in tune to getting people's needs. Mm -hmm. you know? They know that it's still important to you yeah, when right. you show up once right. in a while. Yeah. And I mean, we've, we've always, one thing we've always done, which I don't think a lot of restaurants do, is we've always put money back into the facility. You know, we just put a new, I, they didn't told me yet how much it was, I haven't seen the figure, but a new kitchen floor in that is laid out. It's, it's like this thick, but it's permanent. And it was tiles before that the tiles used to come up because the grouting would go bad because of all the stuff falling on it. Uh -huh. and this is permanent and it's um, really nice. They were worried it's going to be too heavy for the floor. And I said, did you have somebody come and check that? And I said, yeah, they thought maybe it was going to fall in because Barry Zachs, when he owned it as the Lindenhof, he added on the back of the kitchen. It's like probably 20 feet maybe he went out mm -hmm. into the into the next uh, he owned the next property so he went into that and the night I guess that they set up the scaffolding for it it was raining like for three days and it started the building started to sway oh. and they <laughs> <laughs> they had put pilings in to hold the scaffolding up, but then they had to come and shore it up with cement into those pilings so that it would stand. So they shored it back up, fortunately, before it fell over, but it was, it was going to go right into the hole where they were excavating to put the downstairs, which is storage now. For the Some of kitchen. these old buildings down here, you just don't know until oh, you get right. into them. Exactly. Like the church and yeah, the, the exactly. school and so forth. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so we do put money back into it in the sense that I always like it neat and clean, and I think it is. And, and uh, you know, we've redone the bathrooms over a number of times. I am grandfathered, which is fortunate because you just can't get wheelchairs through some of these doors or into the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have that going for me because otherwise I would have to 
tear the whole thing apart, you know, to put in wheelchair right. access. Right. But um, fortunately, because of the age of the building, it's grandfathered. So. Now, I know you hope you're going to be with this restaurant many more years, but there will be a, a time when it has to turn over to somebody else. Will it right. go to your sons then? Well, yeah, I don't go to my four kids. Uh -huh. I have four. Four. Two and, boys, uh, two girls? Or? Two boys and two girls, mm -hmm. right. And, um, you know, I've had meetings with them because I, with this cancer and stuff, I certainly wanted to get my ducks in order as far as my finances and donations and help in the city and stuff. And so I've been doing my, um, you know, final stuff. And, and I had the meeting with the kids and I said, you know, if you, you know, if you don't want to continue with this restaurant, I am not that attached to it that I, which is surprising. It surprised some mm -hmm. of my friends. I said, I'm not that attached to it that I would want you to do it in lieu of doing whatever you really want to do. And so they all knew that. So they are setting up with me um, things for my permanent people that are here, like Todd and Grant and the people who've been with me a long time and setting up sort of, um, you know, a pattern for them if they want to follow mm -hmm. to get part ownership and part profits. You know, they've had a profit sharing all the while. But they've had bonuses, but but this is bigger money than that, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, so I don't know, you know. The kids may decide to sell it if they get enough money for it, you know, because it's a big chunk of land here with the two buildings back there, which are apartments, which bring in a little money. Mm -hmm. And the patio does great. Mm -hmm. I mean, the patio is just, people say it's the best patio in the city. Oh, it's so, wonderful. Yeah. So, um, so it's been good, you know, and I don't want my kids to do something. They're all very successful. I mean, Rick and has two restaurants in Cleveland, is still president of Bravo Brio, and Chris Piata is just going great. Do you ever, have you I eaten have, it's very, very good. Yeah, and so now he's, he's franchising he's, that, is he? No, no, no he owns them oh, okay. all. And then uh, Trish is doing fine, they just, they just had a buyer come in and buy part of their company for just in, they're about both, well, Michael, my son-in-law is like, he's almost 60, and uh, Trish is 53, and so they're looking down the road, and they want to have something for pet people, which is their pet supply store, which has been extremely successful. They have the best people who work for them, the people, do you have a pet? Oh, yes, we have a little dog. Oh, oh. do you ever go to pet people? No, I'm well, going to now, though. Well, there's not one down here, mm -hmm. huh? I'm going to now, though. Yeah, go out on Fifth Avenue is the one closest to here. And it's really, I mean, they are so knowledgeable about if your dog ever gets sick, to, you know, or has any problem, they'll know what it is and help you with that before you have to go to a vet. Very nice. I mean, they're really nice, nice people. And you can take your dog with you. And it sounds really like a very good fun. concept. It is. It's great. It, yeah. They have places where you can bathe the dog, and some some they'll do it for you. But it depends on the building that they're in. Like they have 47 or 46 stores. They have in Chicago, mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh, Indianapolis. They're going into Dallas. They're going into Florida somewhere. Wow. So very nice. Yeah. And then my youngest daughter is. Um, She's married to an Anderson, and they are at some point going to move out west because they're outdoors people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they go mountain biking and hiking, and um, they have a great life. But she also is helping me through this sickness because she's a nutritionist. Oh, good. And Very she good. doesn't like me calling her that because she doesn't have the papers, but mm -hmm. she knows everything about food and what's good and what's Very not. Good. So. So those are my four kids, and, and they're just great, and I'm close to them as can be. Wonderful. So, so it's nice. Well, if you don't mind, tell me a little bit about some of your, I wouldn't say favorite customers over the years, but some that stand out. You, you must have some pretty good oh, we've stories. Had a lot of, yeah, we have a lot of, um, I wish I could have a list of all the, you know, really stars we've had that have come in town to do you know, jobs, Judd Hirsch and Nick Nolte. And That's something else I wanted to ask about the stars yeah, who have visited. Yeah, uh -huh. and um, I mean, I've, you know, they've, they've all 
what was his name that was in um, oh shoot I can't think of the singer who was in uh, a bunch of shows that he came in and and he was <laughs> interesting because he came every every year he'd come to a show in Columbus and then he'd send me at Christmas time he'd send me a pic a Christmas card and it was always a big eight by ten picture of him with one of the, he had a girlfriend who was uh, from Las Vegas, a, you know, a dancer, uh -huh. and uh, a picture of them and then black tie and then another one in, in the side of them, the two of them. And he, uh, my brother was coming down with prostate surgery. He had prostate cancer. And I, um, he had, did this, this actor had just had that. As a matter of fact, he was on the stage after he had to have one of those bags and mm -hmm. stuff, and it was like, can't, what, what was it? I can't think of the name of that show, but it's been around like. I'll let you call time. me later with it, and I'll drop this in. Yeah, yeah. but anyway, he, you know, there have been a lot of musicians, a lot of sports no notables, and. Uh, uh, you know, I'll have to just get names for you. But they've all, of, I'm sure many, many of them have been very pleased to, yeah, to be here and they treat say it so nicely. So, and usually I greet them and say, you know, and usually I tell my people that you don't want to bother them a lot. You know, you don't want to go up to the table a lot and, and uh, be interrupting them. So, so they're good about that. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, they give them their space. Yeah. Which you see in sometimes in the restaurants and somebody of note will come in and everyone will flock to them mm -hmm. and, and you know they don't have time to even eat. Yeah, I'm sure they they all appreciate being able to to have that little bit of space and to right. to um, not be bothered all the time. Uh, customers from the, the the village, any particular? Well, it was always Tony and Ray mm -hmm. and Fred and Howard and I mean uh, the. Uh, but Tom or um, Stephanie and um, Ford, Ford, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And they they were in here every Sunday for brunch. And then oh, Larry James was a regular beginning because he had been here at the in the one it was a bar, and they had they had when I first bought it, they had. Um, video the, or those pinball machines upstairs. Mm -hmm. Oh God, it was terrible because the young people that I had working with me, helping me set this place up, which were, hi honey, mm -hmm. um, were, um, you were interested in these machines and they would be playing them all the time and you'd hear this, <laughs> you know, that noise that they right. make. And it was just, it was awful, but that was what brought a lot of people in here, like Larry James and stuff and, and were they were now they're video games, but then they were in machines, big, mm -hmm. you know. Did you have some of those? After yeah, you they opened? were upstairs. Palmer had them here, and I couldn't wait to get them out. Uh -huh. You know, they were rented, and so as soon as we could, we got them out of here. But in the meantime, I'm sitting there trying to figure out what, what, uh, you know, to to make like provisions for how much I needed for certain things and mm -hmm. trying to do brain stuff and it just you know was impossible because of these machines going <laughs> so but we've had a lot I mean I told you Herb Glimsher and we've mm -hmm. had a lot of the Lazarus people Mr. Lazarus said we had the best eggs Benedict Chuck Lazarus who was president of the store and he said we have the best eggs Benedict in the city and mm -hmm. so so that and um you know, a lot of people that I'm on the boards with, and they come in, like Doug Kreidler at the foundation, and mm -hmm. and his wife, and and you know, it's just, it's always some kind of, you know, one woman walked in here one night, and she said, I didn't know that you rented out the front room, and the hostess said, this isn't this isn't rented out. This is just these people all know one another. <laughs> <laughs> she thought it was one big party. Yeah. yeah, she thought it was a party that we had, you know, engaged. And so, uh, you know, it wasn't. It was just the people were visiting. They all knew one another, and they were visiting back and forth. So it's difficult to walk by the the restaurant and look in and not see somebody. Yeah, you know. 
Well, and I, the Jewish clientele, who are great customers, you know, really took over. I mean, they loved it here. Mm -hmm. And so, it, you know, the, oh gosh, some of them are so deceased. It's been, you know, they've been deceased and gone so long, I can't even think of their names. But uh, they would have their regular tables in the front every Friday night. Mm -hmm. Every Friday night. And then on other days when they come in, they wanted that table too. So, uh, but it was, it, it's been interesting. I've enjoyed it. I really have. And I think, you know, it's been good for me because I do know a lot of people in the city and, and uh, it's always a treat to see them. I don't do a lot of socializing now. I mean, when I was married, I, we went to all the balls and did all that stuff. But uh, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I feel like I, I've done that. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. So, but it's, you know, it's always nice to see people come in here regularly, you know, and I thank them a lot, you know, and I tell the people here who wait on them, you know, th thanks for coming, because I think a lot of times people forget that, mm -hmm. you know, of being really courteous and thanking them. It so, means a lot to people. Yeah, so. Well, Sue, thank you very, very much. Thank you, John. I've enjoyed talking to you.